everyone. So today, you guys asked for it. I will be taking the Oxford Math Emissions Test from 2008. I chose 2008 because, well, why not? And yeah, this is the second part of my 2000 stuff special and I like it for my community for. So thank you guys for 2000 stuff. I'm doing this for you guys because it's really long. <laughs> it's like two hours and a half. And actually, I have the exam over there. You can look at this. It's like the magnificent exam. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I hope I'll do well. And yeah, just to make it clear, I will be taking as I was a, as if I was applying as a mathematics student. So that means there are some questions that I will not do. I don't remember which one, but yeah, probably like in the last questions or something. Well, never mind. So I have. Set a timer for two, two hours and 30 minutes on my tablet. And also, um, since I haven't printed the exam paper because it's way too long, what I, I will be doing is I will be showing my work on this board and I will be taking photos with my tablet. And then after, after taking the exam, I will check through the photos on my tablet and I will, well, grade myself according to this. Okay, so we shall start in Three, two, I told you it's secure now, okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay, I started, you can see like, I started. Okay, so, first question. Okay, so, so this is question one. Okay, so, so yeah, it's like the part where you have like 10 questions and it's multiple choice. So yeah, so, so let me just write out the questions, A, B, C, D, E, F, J, H, I, G, H, I, J. Okay, I like this. So first question. Okay, so we have, yeah, let me just make sure that this is A. The function y equals 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x minus 7 has how many stationary points? No stationary points? What's a stationary point? I, I think a stationary point is like, is like a, a, next, a minimum slash maximum, a local minimum or maximum, or, well, I don't think it's a fixed point where like f of x equals x, so well, we'll, we'll guess that stationary point means like extreme or something because, okay, so it's a cubic, so that means, okay, well, let me just solve this like this, so if we take y prime, we'll get 6x squared minus 12x plus 5, and then we set this equal to 0. Do you have the right to a calculator? I don't think so, right? No. Okay, so. Equals 0. Okay. So if we take the quadratic formula, we get x equals 12, plus or minus square root of 144 minus, okay, 20. 120, so 44 all over 12. So that means we have two stationary points, and that is answer. That is answer C. Oh, yeah, actually, let me write this in red because, yeah. C, like this. And then for question B. Which of these, which is the smallest of these values? So we have log base 10 of pi, square root of log base 10 of pi squared, one over log base 10 of pi cubed, and then one over log base 10 
of the squirrel of pi. That, that was the question that Black Pen Red Pen did a while back, right? Wait, what was it? Like, I, I, I think Black Pen Red Pen made a video on, on this thing. What was the answer actually already? I think, well, well, I, well, well, actually, let me work this out. So, so if log base ten of pi is x, then we have ten to the x equals pi. So now we'll find the most restrictive bounds on x that we can have. So, what else? Oh, okay, so x must be between 0 and 1 because 10 to the 0 is 1, 10 to the 1 is 10. And if we take 10 to the 1 half, so 10 equals pi squared is less than 10, I believe. So that means we have x is less than 1 half. Wait, let me just check. 10 to the 1 half is, less, is larger than pi, so that means 10 pi squared, so that means x is less than 1 half, yeah. But then pi cubed is definitely larger than 10, so that means x is larger than the third. So we have this interval for x. So yeah. Let's say, well, I think the only solution for, I just hit like the thing, right? only solution for me right now is to go full engineer and approximate x. So what's between one third and one half? Um, let me just like take the average of that thing. So we have. One third plus one half. Wait, one third, five six. Let x be approximately five twelfths. Yeah. Okay. So we have five twelfths square root of five six because it's two log base ten of pi, and then twelve cubed over 5 cubed and then 2 over 5 total, so 24 fifths. Yeah, and then one of the large. No, actually. Oh, no, I think this one is larger, right? Because. Yeah, because it's larger than 1. Well, these two are. Oh, do we want the. Oh, no, we want the smallest, right? But these two are larger than one, so we can eliminate them. And so we have okay, so log base ten. Okay, so we want log base ten of pi versus square root of two log base ten of pi. So that means we get if we square this we get no, if we divide by the square root, we get square root of log base 10 of pi versus square root of 2. But So if we cancel all the square roots, we get this. But then we know that log base 10 of pi is less than 2. So that means, yeah, it's log base 10 of pi, so that means the answer is A. So how much time do I have left? Okay, um, yeah, two hours. Okay, I took eight minutes so far. Okay. Question C now. Okay, so we have. No, actually, I'll, I'll just erase all of this because actually, this part isn't great for the working, so it doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah. Okay, so simultaneous equations in X and Y. So we have, let me just write that this is part C. 
x cosine theta minus y sine theta equals 2 and x sine theta plus y cosine theta equals 1 and is solvable are solvable okay so we want the values of theta if there are any for which this thing is not solvable well actually let us try and oh it's a system not solvable actually well let's try solving for x and y Oh no, we just want to find like the two lines don't intersect. So we have, well, we just have y equals x over tangent, x cotangent theta minus 2 cosecant theta. And here we have y equals... negative x cotangent theta plus secant theta, right? No, no, it's tangent theta. Okay, so now we want... Yeah, let me just check that this is right because... We're yeah, that should be right. Why do we have negative here? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is negative. Okay, so now what we have is, well, we want that there are no, that these lines don't intersect, so we must have cotangent theta equals negative tangent theta, meaning, well, if we multiply it by tangent theta and then negative, we get tangent squared theta equals negative 1. But then that would mean tangent theta is complex, which isn't true in the real numbers. So that means... So that basically means it is solvable for all values of theta. But I think at the pi over 2 multiples, there's, there's something dodgy. Yeah, well, let me just check theta equals pi over 2. So we get negative y equals 2 and x equals 1. Yeah. So yeah, I think pi equals, two, pi equals 2 and 3 pi over 2 works. So that means it works for all values of theta. And my tower just went off. So we have theta in the So that means it's A, the answer. All values of theta in the range between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. Wait. Okay. When okay, so we so next question D. We have the polynomial. Okay, so we have 1 plus 3x plus 5x squared plus 7x cubed plus up until 99 x to the 49 and we want this divide, divided by x minus 1 and we want to find the remainder of this okay so polynomial division okay so let's call that some s actually so we have s is the sum okay, so what we'll do is we'll let the sum go from 0 to 49 so then the coefficient will be 2n plus 1 x to the n. So that means s, if we distribute everything out, we get 2 sum n goes from 0 to, infinity, to 49 of n x to the n plus the sum as n goes from 0 to 49 of x to the n. Okay, so what was it? It was like, okay. I, for, I always forget the formula for the geometric series. So 1 plus 
x plus plus x before 9. Then if we s1, and then if we multiply this by x, we get x plus x49 plus x to the 50. And then negative this. Okay, so we get 1 minus x to the 50 over 1 minus x. Okay, and then for this one. Okay, so we have 0 times x to the 0 plus 1 times x. Yeah, we can't have the sum start at 1 because at 0 this will go to 0. So, so we basically have a double sum as k goes from 1 to 49 of uh, n goes from k to 49 of x to the to the n but then what is that summary let me just check so we have x to the k plus k plus 1 plus so up until x to the 49 and then multiply this by x we get x to the k plus 1 plus 1 plus 49 plus x to the 50 and then we get x to the k minus x to the 50 over 1 minus x okay so now what we have basically is okay so we have two times the sum as k goes from 1 to 49 of x to the k minus x to the 50 over 1 minus x and then plus 1 minus x to the 50 over 1 minus x and now if we expand this uh, if for, for this sum now so we get 2 over 1 minus x times as k goes from 1 now so we basically have 1 minus x to the 50 over 1 minus x and then minus 1 and then min minus 98 x to the 50 over 1 minus x okay so what we have what we have is is we have 2 over 1 minus x squared Oh, and then we have the remainder, right? Oh. Because then what we're doing right now is... Yeah, okay. Well, actually, what we can do... Or, yeah, I think it will be better if... We don't try finding a closed form for this. Instead, we can try proceeding by induction and then finding the remainder at like at a certain number of terms and then finding at for at fifty terms. I think yeah, I think that will be better. So now we have well, what we'll do is we'll let p n of x be well one. Well, basically what we had, so the sum as k goes from 1, as k goes from 0 to n of 2k plus 1 times x to the n. So, if we have p1 of x over x minus 1, what do we have? So, we have 3x plus 1 divided by x minus 1, so we get 3 minus, minus 3, so we get 4, so plus 4 over x minus 1, so we'll let the remainder at, p, at pn of x be rn, so we have, and let us just like make this table, and rn, so at 1 this is 4, at, let's compute this for the few values, uh, so for the first few values, so at p2 of x, we get, over x minus 1, we get 5x squared plus 3x plus 1 divided by x minus 1, all over, okay, so we get 5x 
and then minus, so we get 5x squared minus 5x, so we get 8x plus 1, so we get plus 8 minus 8x, we say so 9. So our 2 is 9. And then let's just make a bit of space. P3 of x over x minus 1. What happens then? So we have 7x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x plus 1. Divide this by x minus 1. So we have 7x squared so minus 7x cubed minus 7x squared. So 12x squared plus 3x. And then minus... I was checking if it was still filling because it's going to be long. Okay, um, plus 3x, so we get plus 12x, so minus 12, square minus 12x, so we get 15x plus 1, so plus 15, all over, you know, minus 15x minus 15, so we get 16. So yeah, it seems like we have a pattern, so... So we get, if we have n, we have that our n is just n plus 1 whole thing squared. So that means we get at n equals 49, we get 50 squared. So that means 2,500. Okay, 20 minutes have gone so far. So 2,500, so that means it is b. Okay, that was a pretty tricky problem, but it was fun. Okay, now question, question E. Like, I'm looking there and it seems complicated. Okay, question E. E, 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 E. Okay, the highest power of, oh, come on. L look at this. Look at this messy question. Like, Look at this thing. <laughs> Okay, the highest power of x is... Oh, no, it's actually not that bad. Oh, okay, we just want to find the degree of this. Okay, then. It's manageable. Okay, so... Question E. So we have... Okay, so let me just write down the expression first. So we have... 2x plus 6 plus 7. Whole thing cube plus x to the 8 minus 12 to the 4th whole thing raised to the 5th and then plus 3x to the 5th minus 12x squared to the 5th plus x to the 7 plus 6 to the 4th all of this raised to the 6th and then this whole thing raised to the third power, okay, I want to find the degree of this, basically. So, um, so, so the degree of, well, let me just change colors. Degree of this is 18. Degree of this is, 8 times 4 is 32, so the 18 vanishes. For this one, degree is 25. This one, degree is 28, so... 25 dies and then we get this to the 32 then all of this degrees 32 times 5 160 and then for all of this degree is 28 times 6 48, 16, let me just check real quick, 48 plus 120, yeah, 168, 160 just vanishes, and then we have all of this is, oh, no, blue marker is running out of ink, 168 times 3 is 24, 6, 20, 504. Pray to God that this is an answer choice. Yes, it is answer D. So, 
x to the 504, so d. Okay, good. Question F now. Okay, it's a two. If the trapezium rule, rule sorry, I need to rule approximations. If the trapezium rule is used to estimate the interval is zero to one of f of x by splitting the interval between zero and one into ten intervals, then an overestimate of the interval is produced. If also that the trapezium rule with ten interval underestimates the blah, blah. Okay, um, yeah, so. Okay, so we have question f and we have integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx using trapezium rule. Okay, so that means, well, it's s10, right? Because it's 10 intervals, so s10 is greater than the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x. And now for question, for option A, we have two integral from 0 to 1 of f of x. This will be greater than 2, well, integral of 2 of x, so 2 is 10, so that means it will also be an overestimate. And then, so that means it's not A, B with the interval. Okay, now we have the interval from 0 to 1 of f of x dx minus 1, which is great. Wait. Oh, but then the function could go below the axis, right? You know, actually, it, it's still greater than s10 minus 1. Well, that means... Oh, wait, oh, no. Well, the function is shifted down by 1, so that means we will have an underestimate because... But that's only if... Uh, let's just take a look at the other options, right? Option C is... Well, basically, it's the same interval, but but just like with like it's from one to two, but with a phase shape of tough one, and then it's one minus f of x. We'll go with um, I think we'll go with D because yeah I think we'll go with with D because if we negative all of this we get the integral from zero to one of one minus f of x less than one minus x so we have a less than or equal which is D but again I'm not the expert at integral approximations so. Don't believe me. Okay, now we have um, equation equation sketching. So, a is going to be a rational function because, well, that's what the United States math education system loves, uh, apparently. Okay, so we want, okay, so this is g. We want the graph of one over four minus, uh, four, um, wait, y is equal, to 1 over 4x minus x squared minus 5. Okay, so so yeah, let me let me just like show you the options. No, no, actually, actually like I'll probably like um, no no actually let me just show you right now. Like I, I I think like I'll give you a link in the description that you can follow the exam with me. So yeah, um I don't know if you can see this but no, wait, it's too... Uh... Okay, yeah. Okay, now we, now you can see this, yeah. So basically, it asks you which of the graphs is the... is the function that we want. Okay, so... Let me just see... Well... Oh, let's just try factoring x, this polynomial for fun, so we get... 
negative x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. So we get x equals negative 4. So minus the square root of 16 minus 20. Okay, so so there are, the the denominator doesn't doesn't have any zero, so there are no yeah there are no vertical asymptotes, so so that's true with all of them. And then take the limit to infinity, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, so this seems like it is true for all of them. So yeah, but but then the extreme. Um, oh, yeah, I, I think it, it all lies like in the in the extreme. Well, at x equals zero. Okay. Well, y equals zero. Well, what y of zero is negative one fifth. So that means which is below zero. So that means we can eliminate both C and D and we can eliminate both C and D because the y intercept is below the x side no we can eliminate A and B why am I saying yeah so we can el eliminate A and B because their y intercept is above the x axis when it shouldn't be and then um, And then let's try doing y of 1. We get 1 over 4 minus 1 is 3, negative 1 half. And then y of negative 1 is negative 4 minus 1, negative 1 tenth. So we must have y of 1 is, great, is greater than y of negative 1. Then y of one. Okay, but here for for the a uh, for the c, sorry, y of one. As you can see, um, y of one is this. Okay, now so that means it's d then, because like because in a the y is the y of 1 is further from the x axis than the y of b, so, and they're both negative. So that means we must have an answer of d. Three consecutive d's. I'm totally feeling insecure right now. Okay, now for question h. It seems like it's about exponential equations. Okay, the equation 9x. 9 to the x minus 3 to the x plus 1 equals k has one or more real solutions when k is in one of these intervals. k is greater than or equal to 9 fourths, k greater than 0, k less than or equal to negative 1, k greater than or equal to 5 eighths. So well, let's just solve for x. So we have 3 to the 2x minus 3 times 3 to the x minus k equals 0. So use the quadratic formula. So 3 to the x is. 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 4k, right? Yeah, 4k plus 9 all over 2. So that means x equals log base 3 of 3 plus or minus the square root of 4k plus 9 over 2. I want when want one or more real solutions well first of all the, uh, first of all this, the inside of the square root must be greater than or equal to zero because if we had a because if we screw because if we screw the negative it'll be a complex thing and logarithm of any complex number is a complex non-real number i believe i right like write in the comments if they're any exceptions to that, so we ha must have 4k plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. That means k is greater than or equal to negative 9 fourths, which is one of the options, it's option A. And also, just to check, 
well, if we take a negative sign, if we take a negative sign, we must have 3 minus 4k plus 9 is greater than equal to z. Well, but, but then, yeah, the top will, if we take the plus, the top will always be positive, so we'll, we will always at least have one real root. So that means if it is this interval that's true and it is option A. Okay, that was easier than some of the other questions. Okay, and then question I. Second to last question of part A, uh, of question one. So we have, okay, a function S of N is defined by the sum of the digits of N. Some dict of N. <laughs> Like, like this is a dict. <laughs> and yeah, and want to find the sum as n goes from zero to infinity uh, uh to one hundred. It's n goes from one to one hundred of s of n. Okay, so we have. Well, we have well for one to nine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For for ten. Well, well, for the multiples of ten. We also get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, but then now for 11 to 19, it's all of these but plus 1, so 1 plus well, 1, 2, 3, da, 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 until 9, and then for 22 to 29, we get 2 plus, for 21 to 29, sorry, we get 2 plus 1 to 2 to 3, 2, da, 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 up until 9. And then, yeah, it goes up until 91 to 99, where we have 9 plus 1, 2, 3, da, 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 until 9. So overall, if we let S be 1 plus up until 9, we have, well, S, S prime, let's say, and our sum is S. So we have S is, well, S prime, this one for 1 to 9, plus the multiple of 10, so plus S prime, and then plus, well, we have, if we add all of these, we have 9 S prime, plus S prime because 1 plus 2 plus until 9, so we have 12 S prime, and now S prime is. As Gauss told us, 9 times 10 over 2, so 45. So we have 45 times 12. 90 for 50. So we have 45 times 12. 540. Let me just check real quick. 90. Yeah, this does make sense. And 540 is not one of the answer choices. Um, I know. I actually goes to ninety nine, right? How come? Um, how come I start in that search? Um, one to nine. We have. We do have this one. This one. And then, yeah, 45 times 12. Like that feeling when your answer is not the multiple choice. Uh, what is going on? But yeah, we have to 
taken care of everything, right? Because we have 1 to 9, the multiples of 10, all the 1 to 9s. What else could we be missing? No, we have this, we have this. Then, nice. Well, this song, this song is 45, it can't be anything else. How much time do we have left? Okay, um, one hour and fifty minutes. Um, Well, yeah. This is weird. You know, forty five times twelve. because it's the only multiple of 45 and if I get it wrong I'll just check like what I have done wrong maybe because like I'll be able to check the playback as well and then question J okay we have our trigonometric equation it seems okay my word is the dirtiest ever Okay, in the range 0 to 2 pi, the equation 3 plus cosine x squared equals 4 minus 2 sine to the 8th of x has how many solutions? Well, all, what we can do is um, well, what we'll do is we'll t take everything in terms of cosine. So sine to the eighth is equal to one minus cosine squared to the fourth. So if we let u be cosine x, we have u plus three squared equals four minus two times one minus u squared to the fourth. And now if we expand this, uh, okay, so we have u squared plus six u plus nine, equal four minus two times, okay, one minus u squared, u to the fourth minus two squared plus one, Uh, I'm just like expanding the 1 minus u squared squared. So we have u to the 8th minus 2u to the 6th minus 2u to the 6th. 4u squared, u to the 4th, u to the 4th, u to the fourth, minus 2u squared, minus 2u squared, and 1. So we have, if we distribute, we get negative 2 to the 8th. That's negative 2, right? So plus 8u to the 6th. Minus, minus 12u to the 4th plus 8u squared minus 2, is that right? Well, let me just, u to the 8th minus 4u to the 6th plus 6u to the 4th, 4u squared plus 1. I'm going to just use Pascal triangle, but well, too late, right? Yeah, I think that's what we can do.
Okay, so 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay, so if we bring everything to the left hand side, we get 2u to the 8th, minus 8u to the 6th, plus 12u to the 4th, minus 7u squared, plus 6u minus 7, equals 0. Oh my god. If we try using like the rational root 0 theorem, 2 minus 8 negative 6 plus 6 plus 1, 7. Now if we use negative 1, 2 minus 8, 6. 6, negative 1. No. Um, well, I am totally clueless, it seems. If we factor, how can we factor this? Um, I'm happy, sure. No, no, it's, it's really sign to the eight. Well, does this thing have any real solution first? Like the disc. No, but we don't have any discriminant for a because there is no formula. Um. Well, I think I think I'm just going to guess. Like. Well, if it is, if the equation is that complicated. Well, we want real solutions, right? Well, it does. It. Do, I don't think it has any rational solutions because I'm too lazy to check for plus minus seven. But I don't think it has any rational solutions. Yeah, no, we can because all of these terms are going to be even, and all of these are going to be odd. And even minus odd can be zero. We must have even minus even or odd minus odd to at least have a chance of being zero. So yeah. Seven, so this doesn't work, and then what else? Oh, no, wait, wait, this is going to be even. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I, I'm just going to guess, like, um, well, I don't have like a coin to flip, but I'm just going to guess, um, B. I would be surprised if this has any solutions at all in existence, like in, in the real form. Okay, yeah, no, this was Jack, forgot to write it. Okay, so now we have our solution to the first question. Let me just take a photo of this. Yeah, I, I have to go off frame for that. Excuse, excuse me for a moment. Um, Is it good? Yeah, okay. Okay, so now question two. Oh, so you go away. Okay, how much time do I have left? Now we're 43. Okay, so, um, okay, question two. It is for all applicants as well. I, I can't erase this because I took a photo. Right? Just, just to make sure I, I, I took a photo because I'm paranoid. Um, yeah, I did take a photo. So, yeah. Oh no, my test! I, I, I. <sighs> Come on! Um, yeah. No, question three. Okay, question two. Yeah, I want to erase this. It's question two. For all applicants. Okay, so. Part one, find a pair of positive integers, x1 and y1, that's all the equation, x1 squared minus 2y1 squared is equal to 1. Okay, so we know that, are, are there any obvious ones? Nine, yeah, yeah, they are. 
if we have x1, y1 equals 3 comma 2, we get 9 minus 8 equals 1. Okay, we found a solution, people. This is going well. Okay, so 3 comma 2. Well, let me just mouse the entire thing, right? Okay, part 2. Given integers a and b with the function sequences x1, x2, x3, and y1, y2, y3 by setting xn plus 1 being 3xn plus 4yn and yn plus 1 be axn plus byn for n greater than or equal to 1. Find for the values of a and b such that xn plus 1 squared minus 2yn plus 1 squared equals xn squared minus 2yn squared. Okay, I am dead for this question. Okay, so... Well, let's just substitute in the recursions, right? So we have, if we square this, we get 9xn squared plus 16xnyn plus 4yn squared minus 2x squared xn squared minus 4abxnyn minus... 2b squared yn squared equals xn squared minus 2yn squared. So if we subtract, we get 8 there, 18, oh wait, no, no, 16, 6 there, and 0. So now if we divide by 2, we get 4. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. 3, 1. This is 2. And this is 1. So that means, basically what we have is, so this thing is, yeah, okay, um, oh no, to find A and B, not X and Y and, okay, this is probably more doable. We don't need to write the one. Um, well, we want this for all values of x n and y n. So let's let's group the x n squared terms together. So we get four minus a squared times x n squared. X n y n we get eight minus two a b x n y n, and then plus three minus b squared y n squared. Okay, now we just need to find this where all equals zero. Oh, okay, it, it doesn't say in oh, integers. Why do we have three minus b squared? Oh, but it doesn't define what is Well, if and because we added, oh, why does life have to be so hard? Well, it's 16 y n squared, so it's 18. I mean, it's 9 there. 
Yeah, it's fine because I forgot to score the four. Okay, now we, now we get that. Yeah, they are integers. So that means a and b must be two comma three. Okay. Part three. Find pair of integers capital X capital Y. X squared minus two y squared equals to one, and x greater than y greater than fifteen. Okay. Mm. Oh, um, yeah, twenty percent battery. Let me just like because it, there, there was like a notice on my phone that there is twenty percent battery. Just, just so you know, I I forgot to tell you at the start. I I might like just stop the exam there because like my phone has has low battery and I don't want it to die while I'm filming this. So yeah, just so you know. Anyway, I don't think I'm getting far anyway. So okay, so yeah, what do we? Let's solve for y squared, for y, so that means y is the square root of x squared minus 1 over 2. Okay, so that means x is all, because we, have, we must have an even number for it to work in the numerator. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's hard. X is odd. Fifty ones. I want that score to be even. Oh yeah, and this must be greater than fifty. So that means x squared minus one must be greater than five thousand. So x squared is greater than five thousand and one. Meaning, x is greater than square root of 5001. 5001. Well, square root of 5001. What square root of 5001? If, well, 40 times 60, 16 times 60, 3600. 16 times 80, 6400. 70, so if we have 75 times 75, what do we get there? So we have 25, 7, yeah, and then 5, 2, we have 5, Okay, so it's less than 75. Try 72 times 72. Four, five, one. Okay, and then if we try 71 times 71. Okay, so that means x is greater than 70. Okay, so if x is greater than 70, 71 square minus 1, 5, 4, 0, divide this by 2 is 5, 20, and it's not a square, right? I can't think of any multiple like that. No, 52 is not a square to begin with, so that doesn't work. Um, yeah. And this is tricky. Number theory is definitely not my strong suit. Um, well, square minus one can be factored as the difference of squares, right? So we have minus one times 
X plus one. Um. I, I shall just like to count how many times I how many times I breathe during this. Um. Well, you know what? I am actually pretty dead from this. Should I just give up and skip it? Let's read part four. Mm -hmm. Oh. Then. If. Uh, well, one of them should be a square. And the other should be also a square. So if we let x be 80, no, it must be even. If x is 99, and x minus, so we get x plus 1 equals 40, is equal to 100 x minus 1 over 2 is 90 over 2 is 49 and y is 7 times 10 or 70 so that means and x is greater than y is greater than 50 so that means x y x comma y is equal to 99 times 70 okay i managed to solve this okay. let me just take a photo of this I have to go off frame again. Okay, now part four of question two still. It's the last part of question two. So, um, Okay, um, now, part four, using the values of A and B from part two, what did we find A and B? Two, A, was, A B was two, three, right? A comma B was two comma three, and then, what is the approximate value of X and over Y and as N increases? So, Remember that we had, so that means xn plus 1 equals 3xn plus 4yn, yn plus 1 equals 2xn plus 3yn. And we want the limit as n goes to infinity of xn over yn. So basically the limit as n goes to infinity of xn plus 1 over yn plus 1, which is 3xn plus 4yn, 2xn plus 3yn. Yeah, hey, well, we can set like this because x1 and y1 were solutions to our original equation from part one. Let me just show you. Like x1 and y1 were solutions to like because there is a lamp there. How, how do I? Uh. You can't see this, but yeah, it's x1 and y1 that were the solutions. That means x1 and y1 can can be 3 and 3 respectively, so that means 
Our skills just start with. Okay, so that means. Okay, so, so let's make ourselves a nice little table. X and N, one. Let's calculate like the first two values or something. So, three, two. Okay, so X2 is three. X1, so 9 plus 8, 17, Y2 is 6 plus 6, 12, X3 is 51 plus 48, so 99, and Y3 is 34 plus 36, so 70. And let's just like do the fourth. So, so we have 3 times 99. Seven, 27, 97, so 297 plus 280 is 7. 577 and then 99 times 198 so 198 plus 2110 is 8 408 let me just rewrite this 2 like this so uh, do we have any recursive formulas for just x Well, if this side is three, three. Well, seventeen minus three is fourteen. Nine nine minus seventeen is eighty-two. Yeah, I don't see anything obvious there. Um. Um, let's see. Well, they do get close. Right? Um, no, no, they stray further apart, actually. Oh, wait! Xn goes faster than Yn. So that means it's infinity. So that means the limit at n goes to infinity of Xn over Yn. Oh, I know, but Fibonacci numbers do that too. Fibonacci numbers like they do stray apart, but the limit is phi. Well, the ratio. Wait, um. Uh, well, um, how do we? Well, let's just like, limit as n goes to infinity of xn is well, 3xn plus 4yn all over xn plus 1. So limit as n goes to infinity 3xn over x plus 1 plus 4 limit as n of, okay, so yn is you know i think we'll just guess infinity for now <laughs> like i it's like i i don't want to waste time i'll, I'll just guess and if it's wrong it's wrong so again i have to go off frame to take a photo i am very not confident in my answer but well it'll have to do okay so yeah we we i like 
Okay, now it is time for the question three. Okay, it, it's a function, okay. This is this probably going to be easier. Okay. Our board is like the dirtiest it's ever, it's ever been in ages. Okay, so number three. Okay, it's not nice, so I have to do this. Okay, so um, the graph of y equals f of x. Okay, so we have the graph of a function f of x. And we want to find the graph, and, and we have the graphs of f of negative x, f of x minus 1, and negative f of x in some order. Say which axis corresponds to which one. Like, oh, no, it's 10%, right? I, I think, yeah, they do give a warning at first. Wait, no, actually, I, I can't, like, show, right? It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, no, it's because of my lamp, right? Or if I get closer. Okay, now you can see, right? It's because, like, we have a... a, a my mother just wrote to me, like, Oh, oh no, I'm actually. Yeah, it's like they're working. Yeah, it, it's like just so you can see, right? Yeah, I'll be like this. Okay, um, yeah, so we want to find graph A is okay, so we have. We can't see. It looks like negative f of x. So a is is negative f of x. B is what f of negative x. Yeah, f of negative x. And c should be. Let me just check. X minus one, yeah, the function has been shifted to the right. F of x minus one. Okay, so part two. Sketch on the axis opposite. The graphs of, of two to the negative x squared and two to the two x minus x squared. Okay, so, so yeah, so we have a graph Go like this. Okay, so we have. Let's just make ourselves some nice little axes. So this is one. This is two. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is negative one. This is negative two. Okay, so we have y equals two to negative x squared. So y of zero is one y of one is two to the negative one so one half and actually it's an even function right so one is one half y of two is to the negative four, so one sixteenth. Okay, so one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. Okay, it's like really low. And also the other, there is like the asymptote or something. Okay, like this, approximately, and then y. Uh, y equals 2 to the 2x minus x squared, so it's like y to the negative x squared plus 2x minus 1 plus 1, so that, that is like 2 to the negative x plus 1 squared. So I feel like it will be easier if we just plot values directly, so yeah, we will also have the 1 here. At x equals 1, we get 2 x equals negative 1, we get negative 2, negative 3, so 1, one eighth. And 
at x equals 2. At least probably like the same function but shifted to the right by 1 and then scaled by a factor of 2. Yeah. Let me just generate f of 4 minus 4 is 0, so that is 1. And 3, 6 minus 9. Wait, 6 minus 9 is 83, so yeah, an eighth. Okay, so we have. We have. This of this y equals 2 to the 2x minus x squared, and this is y to the. Uh, y equals 2 to the negative x squared. Okay, and. Part 3. Okay, my table and all, it's 10%. Is there any okay? Um, oh, oh yeah, there was a the last part. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see the random uh, real number and define i of c as integral from zero to one of two to the negative x minus c equals to the square dx. State the values of c for which i of c is largest. Briefly explain the reasoning. Know that you are not being asked to calculate this maximum value. So we just want to find the value of c for which this is largest. So, so what we'll do is we differentiate. My handwriting is abysmal. Differentiate using formal theorem of calculus. Part. No, it is it from from No, no, it, it is not it, it, using the Leibniz rule. So we get i prime of c equal zero from zero to one of partial derivative with respect to c of 2 to the negative x minus c squared dx. So this is 0 to 1 of the c of e to the negative x minus c squared natural log of 2 dx. Get integral from 0 to 1 of, well, we get 2 to the negative x minus c squared times, okay, the derivative of this. So times the natural log of 2 times 2 times x minus c dx. Okay, so this is negative natural log of 2, negative 2 natural log of 2. A draw from 0 to 1 of x times 2 to the negative x minus c so squared dx. And then we have plus, well, minus minus, so plus 2 natural log of 2 times i of c, right? I want to set this to zero so that means we want zero from zero to one of x to the negative minus c squared dx equals it all from zero to one of two to the negative x minus c or dx so well we can't just cancel the intervals right away so um I thought it was a notification. Um, well, we want the value of C for which these two intervals are equal. If x is 0, I think you 
is are you cool? Well, if we use, let's do the duration by part, so the i plus or minus, one we get x, negative, square this time, well, um, yeah, this is hard, well, we need these two drills to be the same. Yeah, let's try um a twelve x is. I'm becoming lazy right now, am I? No, wait, actually, we don't need to use my issue, right? Um, well, if we just take a look at I of C, what is this? Um, well, it's just a shift, right? Yeah, it's just a shift. We're just shifting this function around. That means the extrema must be in the middle. So that means at x equals one half, we must have the extrema of the function. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. We're getting somewhere. I choose IB true. Okay. So we have. Yeah, the extrema of this function must be at one half. That means we must have something like, so this is one. And the extrema must be And if we have like a stream of further to the right, if we have the extrema, no, I think, yeah, the extrema needs to be in the middle. So that means we must have x is equal to 1. Okay, so that means we must have. Let f of x be 2 to the negative x minus c squared. That means the extrema must be at x equals 1 half. The extrema, I'm sorry. So must have, that means f prime of x is 2 to the negative x minus c squared times, okay, so we have e to the negative x minus c squared natural log of 2. So we must have natural log of 2 times negative 2 x minus c times 1. Okay, so we have negative 2 natural log of 2, 2 to the negative x minus c squared times x minus c, which is 0. So we must have at least equal to zero. And at x equals one half. So we have two to the negative one half minus c squared times one minus c equals zero. U equals one half minus c, so we have two to the negative u squared times u equals zero, meaning u equals zero, meaning c equals one half. Okay, so c equals one half. So it's that's the final part, right? Yeah, that is the final part of question two. So we, so let me just take a screenshot. Um. So, hold, hold, let me just like check the battery of my phone because it's like. Oh no, I can't. Right. If I do. No way, I can't check the battery on my phone, right? So, um, yeah, but let's just try and continue while we have.
I'm very. Well, yeah. Okay, we'll just continue, right? Okay, so. Like this, and this. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, now it's geometry. Let me just erase everything. Yeah, it's still filming, right? You're still on battery. Come on, cell phone. You can survive this. You can. Okay, um, yeah, question four now. We have some geometry, it seems. So, yeah, part one. So, we have a circle and a right triangle and a Cartesian axis. So we have a so we have something like this. A circle going through the origin. And then we have this. So this is the point P P comma zero. This is the point Q zero zero comma Q. And yeah, this goes through the origin. And one show that the equation of circle C which passes through P Q in the origin O is x1 minus px plus y square minus qy equals zero. Okay, so we know that this is a right angle. And now, since, well, we'll let O be the origin. And then, since angle POQ is right, PQ is a diameter. So that means the midpoint of the hypotenuse of PQ of PQ is the center. So now, yeah, okay, so we know that this is one, so, so, um, yeah. We basically just want this scale down, so this is P over 2, this is Q over 2, this is P over 2, so that means this is P over 2 comma Q over 2. So, using similar triangles, Angles, we find that the center is equal to P over 2 comma Q over 2. And now the radius, the radius is one half the length of PQ, so one half the square root of p squared plus q squared over 2. Therefore, the circle's equation will be what well, the circle has equation x minus p over 2 squared plus y minus q over 2 squared equals square root of p squared plus q squared over 2 square and now if we multiply everything by 4 we get 2x minus p squared plus 2y minus q squared equals p squared plus q squared we get 4x squared minus 4px plus p squared plus 4y squared minus 4qy plus q squared equals p squared plus q squared p squared p squared cancels, q squared, q squared cancels, fours, 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 fours cancels. So we get x squared minus px plus y squared minus qy equals zero, which completes the proof. So yeah, let me just take a picture of this because then I'll have to erase. I want to find the center and area of C as well. Thank God. Yes. Yes. So, 
Let me just like denote the center of C. Okay, so we have C has these coordinates and then is equal to pi times so pi over four. Well, pi times square root of p squared plus two squared over four, over two squared. So pi over four times the quantity p squared plus two squared. Okay, so now okay, it's, it's still filming. Our cell phone is resisting. Okay, good. Try to resist. I'm just taking a picture right now because I'll have to erase the board right after. Okay, come on cell phone, you can survive, you can do this. Probably. I just like dropped two markers at once, which is an impressive feat. Okay, number two, show that the ratio of the area of circle C. The area of circle C. The area of C is pi over four times p squared plus q squared. And the area of OPQ is PQ over two. So therefore, we want Pi over 4 times p squared plus q squared all over p. Okay, so yeah, my phone ran out of battery and I used my phone to film this, so that means I had to charge it and then I could film it again. I remember I was about 1 hour and 30 minutes into the exam, so I have 1 hour left. And also, I haven't taken a look at the remaining questions, so don't worry, it's still off the top of my head. So, yeah. Uh, I set a timer for one hour because that's approximately what time was left. So, we'll start in three, two, one, go. Okay, so where were we? Oh, yeah, the triangle thing and the circle, right? Okay, so, yeah, so we had the first part down the equation of the circle and then wanted to show that the area of the circle over the area of the triangle is greater than or equal to pi so this quantity right there um, so we want to show that well okay so um Oh wait, all we can do is we can write this as pi times p over q plus q over p and then we know that by amgm, the amgm equality, we have p over q plus q over p over 2 is greater than or equal to the geometric mean of p and q so square root of p over q times q over p but then that is just one but wait well it needs to be greater than, greater than or equal to pi right yeah okay so that means p over q plus q over p is greater than or equal to 2. So that means if we multiply both sides by pi that p over q plus q over p is greater than or equal to 2 uh, to two pi which is still greater than or equal to pi. Well, not necessarily equals but yeah you get the point. And now part, oh no, that's part two, yeah, that's part two. And now part three, we want to solve 
for if that ratio is equal to 2 pi. So if pi times p over q plus q over pi equals 2 pi, then p over q plus q over p equals 2. I want to find the angles OPQ and OQP. So that means, let's just like draw this thing again. It's Y, X, well, we have this, this is O, this is P and this is Q. So this is Q and this is Q. And we want to find yeah, the, the two non right angles. So we'll call this one alpha and this one beta. So we have alpha is inverse tangent q over p. Beta is inverse tangent p over q. And now, well, what we can just say is that well, if we multiply both sides by pq, we get p squared plus q squared equals 2pq. Subtract from both sides, we get p squared minus 2pq plus q squared equals 0. And this is just the square root of p minus q, so p minus q whole thing squared is equal to 0. So we have p equals q, meaning p over q equals q over p, which is 1. Therefore, alpha is 45 degrees and beta is 45 degrees. So that means they're both 45 degrees. Okay, so now let me again go up frame to take a picture of this. So let me just all good. Yeah, okay. Now next question. Oh yeah, also I charged the both the phone and my tablet well before before filming, so there is no chance that anything goes wrong here. Okay, so we have done question four. Okay, question four is done. And next question five. Okay, it's four off. Okay, so that means I have to do it. As I said in the beginning, I was acting as if I was taking uh, as if I was a math applicant because I'll probably I, I am probably a math applicant. Okay, so um, let me just erase. This now we, have, we are at question five. So, um, okay, it's a really really long problem. So, let me just read this. The Millennium School has one thousand students and one thousand lockers. Lockers are in the line in a long corridor and are not numbered from one to one thousand. Initially, all the lockers are closed but unlocked. First student walks along, opens every locker. Second student closes every second locker. Third student, oh yeah, the classic puzzle uh, is the classic puzzle. Oh yeah, t yeah. Okay, so so yeah, it's kind of like the classic um. Puzzle like Tele did something like this a while back, like the overcomplicated riddle that like no one cares to try and solve. I just used to Tele as well. Okay, um, so yeah, part one. How many lockers are closed immediately after the third student has walked along the corridor door? Well, let's just take a look. Uh, take a look at the group of six lockers so group of six lockers so we have well this is open and this is closed open closed open closed so that is after the first two students the two students I abbreviated it as two, this is a bit more, okay. And now, the third person goes along and open and closes this one. And opens this one. So after the 
third student. So that means for a group of six like this, the number of on and off lockers don't change. So, okay, so let's see. 1,000 is six times what plus what? 1,000, 99 divisible by six, 996. Yeah, 996 should be divisible by six. So that means we have plus four, right? Let me just check, 99. So is multiple of three and it's even, okay, so yeah. That means we have the four remaining lockers. So four remaining. My handwriting is getting worse and worse. So yeah, it's, it's like a open, close, open, close. So open, closed, open, closed. And then, and then he closes this one. So that means we have one more locker than before because all the groups of six are the same except for the final group of four. So that means there are 500 plus one, 501, and one are closed, right? So 501 closed lockers. Okay, so part two, how many lockers are closed immediately after the fourth student has walked along the corridor door? Okay, now along the fourth. Well, it was like something about the prime factors, right? It was like But yeah, okay, so, so they're basically asking how many lockers are closed immediately after. So, so that means what they're asking. Well, let's, let's go back to part one because every third locker. So, a locker will be closed if it's um, a multiple of two, but not a multiple of three. Well, if it's either a multiple of two or a multiple of three. So that means, oh yeah, here in part two, every fourth locker is closed. So that means either all the four, either. So yeah, a locker, a locker will remain closed if it's multiple of two, but not multiple of four, and not a, a multiple of three because they've been opened before, and then, and then it'll be open if it's not. If it's a multiple of three, but neither, but not a multiple of two. So that means we want how many, many numbers, number, from one to one thousand that are either multiples of two or multiples of three. Three because for the fourth it's a multiple of three, it can be multiple of three. Okay, so yeah, I, I guess we'll just go with this. So so well I think it won't change, right? If a locker is a multiple of four. Yeah, they, they will all be opened. Well, 
Wait, the multiple is of 12. Multiples of 12 will be multiples, right? So yeah, basically, if a lot of people A multiple of 12. Oh, it's so confusing. How many are. Um, because, well, all of them are open at the beginning, then at the second screen, and every. And then. Oh, here, person. For example, locker 12. Yes, yeah, so, so that means that means we have the multiple of twelve. Uh, the multiples of twelve. We have uh, well, that will be closed, obviously. We have. Um, what else that we will be closed? The multiples of two. That are not multiples of three. Because if it's a multiple of three, it will be open. And the multiples of four. Yeah, okay, so all the multiples of 12 and the multiples of 2 that are not multiples of 3. But for the multiples of 3, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we'll just go with this. So for the multiples of 12, 12, so that means divisible by 3 or 4, so that means it's 996 divided by 12. And then here, the multiples of 2 that aren't multiples of 3, so that means all even numbers, so 500 minus all the multiples of 6, so 9 minus 6 over 6. So that is 500 minus 996 over 12, 996 divided by 12 on division, 896 in threes, but it means 500 minus 83, 517, that means 417 closed lockers. Okay, now let me just take a picture of this again. Okay, and then for the third question, well, let me just erase this, so, third question, okay, so question, well, part three, actually, how many lockers will be closed after all 1,000 students have passed. Oh, no. At the end of... Well, after 1,000 students have passed, what is the state of locker 100? Explain your reasoning. Well, if... Well, as they said in TED-Ed, if a number is... If a number has an even number of factors, it will be closed, because it will be open, closed, open, closed. So the numbers that will remain will open are those that have an odd number of factors. So the squares means remain open. Open equals odd number of factors. So yeah, this is the squares. So that means 100, which is 10 squared, will be open. 
open. Yay! <laughs> Why did I do this? Okay, so um, and then part four. After the hundred student has walked on the corridor, what is the state of locker one thousand? After the one hundred student. Well, how many divisor? Well, one thousand. It's five hundred times two, so four times two fifty, so eight times one two five. So well, it's just ten cubes, so two cubes times five cubed. And now, how many of those are less than a hundred? Well, we have one, two, no, no three, so four, five, no six, eight, no nine. 10, no 12, 20, yeah, not 25, right? Yeah, 25, not 30, so, um, 40, I guess. Yeah, it's good. T 25 times 40. Yes. So, so that means we can just complete the divisors, right? So 20 times 50, and then 10 times 100. So that means first one will open, two will close. So open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. Open, close. Open, so that means it will be open. Okay, so now I'll just take a picture of this. It's weird because parts three and four were easier than parts one and two. That's weird. Okay, now um, that was question five, question six. For applicants in computer science and mathematics, computer science only, so I don't do this question because I'm only mathematics. Question seven, computer science only. It seems I'm done actually, right? Yeah, I'm done. Wait, let me just check again, right? Wait, I don't have the questions I have to do. For seven is for computer science only. Six is for computer science, mathematics only, a computer science only. Five is for all applicants. Four is for mathematics, mathematics, all applicants. And one is for all applicants. So yeah, it seems like I'm done. So that means I'll just check all my uh, all the photos I, I've taken or if something's on it, I'll just check the playback and well, so I'm not, I'm not confident at all, but, well, let's see. Okay, so the results are in. And like, just to clarify, I wrote um, a tick if the answer was correct, and X if the answer was not correct, and a dash, as you can see there, if the answer was correct, but the working was not correct. And yeah, I, I understand the mistakes that I've made. For example, for G, I just like, did, some, did a mistake, right? For question for question two, it it also was a a careless mistake. Question four, it was like I was clueless, but it was pretty amazing. Let me just like show it to you real quick. So we so we had an x one equals three, y one equals two, x n plus one squared minus two y n plus one squared equals x n squared minus two y n squared. It was like since at n equals 1, we get 1. All of this is going to be equal to 1. And then, and then that means if we divide by yn, we get xn over yn squared minus 2 equals 1 over yn squared. But then since they both get larger, this is approximately equal to 0. So that means since this goes to 0, we get xn over yn 
tends to the square root of 2 since they're both positive. So yeah, that was a pretty nice thing that I would have, have thought about. And then question 3, I got everything correct. Question 4, I made a silly mistake. I My smart brain thought that 1 fourth over 1 half equals 1 apparently. Oh, no, there was one half of one fourth, I think. Yeah, but well, one of them, I, I, I can't remember which. And yeah, question five, it was all correct. And so they say in the marking that that each of the questions of question one is worth four points. And each of the questions, well, two through five in my case, but it's two, two through seven. So two through five are all worth 15 points each. So let me just get my calculator. So, okay. So first, how much point is this? Uh, how much is the total? So we have ten times four plus fifteen times five. So that is forty. That is seventy-five. So, so the score is out of one fifteen. And then, okay, so here we have 9 times 4, which is 36. And then here we have, okay, so uh, let me just say, 15 divided by 4 is 3.5. So here we can award ourselves 3.5, 3.50. 5, let me just write 0 next to all the incorrect ones. And um, we can say that if it's, since it's, Okay, we can just say like two or something because well yeah well we can just say two so here I've got nine and then for this one 15 15 for this one as well and then here I can give myself a five because it's one third okay so we have 36 plus okay so 36 plus 9, 15, 5, 15, okay, so this is 15, this is 15, so we have 30, 3 plus 3, 6, 7, 8, so we have 80 out of 115, let me just check it again, right, so 45, 60, 80, yeah, and then 80 out of 115 is, let me just, use a calculator so 80 over 115 in percentages calculator so we have 80 divided by 115 times 100 equals so that means I have well it's in some process value I have 69.6% I passed. Not necessarily with flying colors, but I at least I passed. Like it was better than I think like the the um was it? the MIT integration big thing. I, I got I think I got like exactly sixty. So on that also yeah I remember like for the wait which one which one was like the trapezium rule question? I think it was question F, right? Well I I I, I kind of flipped it and also the J. Wait, what was the J apparently? It was like the one with um but wait, what was question J again? Let me just check. Uh question J Oh yeah, it was like the um complicated trigonometric equation with like sign to the eighth in it. Yeah, I I I just guess like I fluked it. And what else also? Oh yeah, the question I with the sum of the digits was, it's weird because I got the correct answer, but my working gave something different. So I'll look into that. And um, yeah, this was a pretty nice exam overall. It, it's pretty challenging, I, I must say. Like so challenging that my phone, uh, my phone gave up. So, um, yeah, and also I, how much time was left? Oh no, I forgot to stop the, I forgot to stop the timer. 
But well, and there were like 39 minutes and 42 seconds left, as it said there. So, well, we'll round up to 40. So, 40 minutes. Yeah, there was 40, and there was 40 minutes left in the exam. So, how much time did I take? I mean, 20. I got, I did this in one hour and 50 minutes to get a 69.6 percent. Yeah. Okay, so well, yeah, this is the video. Thank God for sure you do it. And of course, thank you for 2K subs. You guys made me do this. And I'm not complaining. This was, this was a pretty nice exam, but yeah, again, thank you for 2000 subs.